Okay, I see the record icon okay. recording. There and we go. And now, um, let's see. All right, we should now. Okay, I'm I'm clicked on the button. It looks like it's recording. Okay. So, um, welcome everyone. Thanks for spending some portion of your weekend with me here. I'm Patrick Kane. I'm the director of University Alliances at uh, Infineon um, Technologies. And uh, we're gonna go over, there's a, a, a rather lengthy PDF file that hopefully you, you received, but we're not definitely not gonna get through all of it. Hopefully we get through the first uh, demonstration. We're gonna use this, uh, this kit here, which is the CYAC kit 043. Little word of advice for long-term use. I use one of these little extenders where I can plug the kit in because what can happen is over time, and if you're using one of these other kits that is bigger and heavier, it mechanically can damage your USB port. So um, you can either put the box underneath the kit like this, and that will support it and nothing will happen today. It's just that if you do it for months, it's gonna damage your USB port. Um, so anyhow, I use one of these. And um, without further ado, let me share my screen and we will uh... Okay, so can everyone see my slides? Just give me a thumbs up or yeah, I see it. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I see it too. good. So what we want to do here today, uh, hopefully you were able to install PSOC Creator and then the 043 kit package. Um, and that just makes it it's not 100% necessary to have the kit package. It just makes it easier if you want to follow along with the demo. So um, as I mentioned, uh, I work for Infineon Technologies, but uh, a year and a half ago, I worked for Cyprus and Cyprus or Infineon acquired Cyprus. Get that almost got that backwards. So, I'll just briefly talk about that and what it means, perhaps to you as students. Um, brief introduction: of, you know what is PSOC and, and and the architecture and stuff, and then the uh, um, IDE overview. And as part of that, I'm going to uh, pull up the demo that's in the kit package and. Um, modify it uh, so basically programming the the uh, kit several times in succession making small changes and we can see how uh, how those changes affect the breathing led and then probably what we're not going to get to and uh, but you'll have this file in a kit so hopefully there's enough documentation step by step that you can do these on your own um, but there's uh, uh, or we could have a, another session and we could go through these two labs um, one is to create a blinking LED using just the ARM microcontrol unit. So in other words, firmware control, no hardware at all other than the LED. And then the other lab is doing the same thing but using a pulse width modulator and actually not using the MCU. So just using hardware. So that's one of the unique things about PSOC. Um, you can do things you know, just in firmware, just in hardware. And of course the, the, the the best way is, you know, using both um, hardware and, and firmware. And uh, we'll still do the Q&A um, at this point. Um, if you have questions while I'm talking, uh, put put them in the chat and I will uh, stop periodically and, and, and answer questions if, uh, if any come up. So the Q&A, even though it's way down on the agenda, it's probably, um, you know, anytime you have a question, just type it into the chat. And then I put a, an extensive appendix um, with other PSOC kits you might uh, be interested in, particularly with Bluetooth low energy and Wi-Fi, and um, also some other kind of more in-depth information on PSOC creator and, and the, the design flow and stuff, things like that. So without further ado, um, you know, Cypress, as I said, is now an Infineon technology com company. What that does for me personally is it, it gives me a lot more reach because we go from, um, you know, being a player in the automotive industry to being the number one supplier to the automotive industry. Um, 
what Cyprus added to Infineon was to leapfrog over NXP. Um, so we're now number one, and that's not just uh, you know digital; it's power chips and all all facets of of the of the car in terms of electronics, and also the eighth largest semiconductor company in the world. So I, I would say Cyprus was probably in the twenties. Um, um, so now we have a lot more um, fabs and, and band, as I said, bandwidth, and also a lot more toys in my toolbox to play with because there's a bunch of sensors that Infineon makes that Cypress never made, a, a, a thing called, a, there's also an H-Bridge kit that has a microcontroller on it. And so you can, um, you know, so we have the complete bundle. You can do a complete uh, project complete with the power chips, the microcontroller, the digital logic, and, it's, and so on. So what does that, and, and then this kind of says the same thing, just in a, giving you some, some uh, more numbers, uh, but almost 50,000 employees now, um, which is, uh, that, this is about a year old, this particular slide. So it's closer to 50,000 employees now. So we are hiring. You can go to our website, either cypress.com or infinity.com and, uh, you know, there are internships and um, new college graduate recs available, jobs available. So what does this mean to you? Well, it means that, you know, these are our major customers across several industries, automotive, indus uh, you know, industry like factories, um, consumer and security. And um, you're gonna, I'm sure you recognize some of these names, Google, for example, Amazon, Lenovo, Microsoft. So what it means is it's quite likely that when you graduate and if you, you know, get a job, um, you might be working directly for one of these companies or you might be working for a company that is supplying one of these companies. And so you might likely be using Infineon parts. In fact, I would, I would guess, I'm, I haven't verified it, but because it's, uh, you know, with the pandemic and everything, it's been hard to, to get, get out and about. But um, I would suspect you have some Infineon parts in your, in your power electronics lab because Infineon acquired a company called International Rectifier about four years ago. Um, and uh, that brand has been kept for the high rel stuff. Uh, um, so anyhow, you're probably already using our, our parts and maybe just weren't aware of it. And then we've got our distribution partners uh, down below and uh, what's missing here because probably you would use DigiKey or Mauser um, as students, uh, but they are also distribution partners. So what about PSOC? Um, well, there's over 20 years of explosive growth. The first major design win was the um, um, iPod first generation in the click wheel. Um, and that's when Cypress at that time realized, hey, we got a, a, a winning part here because obviously there were millions of those sold and therefore millions of chips sold to Apple. So uh, there's literally thousands of active customers, um, billions of PSAC units shipped and uh, in over 1100 universities uh, worldwide. Cause I, I've actually been doing this since 2006, starting with Cyprus and um, it's been a fairly successful program. So, but what is PSAC? It's, really a, a, a system on chip, a programmable system on chip because it has configurable analog. And by that, I mean, it actually has op amps, comparators, um, analog to digital converters, digital analog converters, programmable digital peripheral functions. Now these are something at a high level, much like an FPGA in the sense that you got a bunch of unconnected transistors and you as the designer figure out, well, do I want a timer? Do I want a counter? Do I want to build a PWM, um, CRC, or whatever? So uh, in that sense, it's it's uh, digital logic that you put together, depending on what your needs are for your project. Then, of course, there's memory, both volatile and non-volatile. The non-volatile memory is when you actually program the device or the kit. You have, um, uh, that's where it stays. So you turn the power off and turn it back on. The kit is still programmed. It's not like an FPGA where you turn the power off and you turn it on and you need this side chip to, uh, to basically feed it its programming again. Um, so it's always, uh, always there. And then there's a microcontroller. These days, that is an ARM microcontroller, overwhelmingly. Um, 
uh, cortex M0, M0 plus, M3, M4, and uh, and uh, continuing with with more families. So uh, that's what PSOC is at a very high level. And what I want to talk about next is the architecture um, of the PSOC 4M, which is the chip that's on your kit. And uh, then we're going to learn how to use PSAC Creator to create a project and program a kit. So hopefully we'll program the kit uh, a couple times here. And those of you who don't have kits, you can do everything up to, but not including programming the kit. Obviously, if you don't have one, but you can, you can, uh, you know, compile the design. Um, so what about the architecture? So here's the kit. Um, oh, one arrow disappeared somehow. I didn't notice that. But anyhow. This is the PSOC 4200M. There was an arrow here. Um, and uh, we've got a switch. The, basically, it's a, a reset switch, so it turns, turns it on and off. Um, there cuts the power. There's an LED. This is what we're going to use. And there, this is actually a PSOC 5 LP, but we use them um, as programmer debuggers on our kits. It's much. Uh, it's a much uh, easier solution. And of course, since we make both chips, it's less expensive for us. And therefore the kits are less expensive for you. Of course, they're free to you today. Um, and then, you know, you can't do a whole lot with just this kit. Uh, uh, so you've got these headers. If you solder headers in here, this will fit into a breadboard and then you can connect other things up to the kit quite easily. You've got, so this is a basically a, um, Switch one, and then here. Actually, I misspoke. This is this is a user programmable switch. This is um, a reset switch, which uh, is not populated. Keeps the cost of the kit down. Um, and this, if you wanted to add a, a BLE chip, which there I didn't show the back of this, but there's a place to solder an, uh, an easy BLE chip on here, and this would be a switch to to program either this chip or the other chip on the back. So this is actually quite a useful board. And if you put a little uh, soldering expertise into it, you can make it even more useful. And uh, um, this uh, uh, sells for $10. So it's a uh, it's, uh, fairly reasonable cost as well. Okay, so what's inside that chip? And in fact, what's inside all PSOC chips? Because at a high level, again, the main building blocks are the same. There's an MCU subsystem. There is a, let's see, I have a, I guess I can just use my mouse. Oh, spotlight, let's try that. Okay, so um, I'm gonna close this so I can see. So um, we have a MCU subsystem, which is where the microcontroller lives. In this case, it's an M0 running at 48 megahertz. Uh, in the family, various uh, uh, amount of flash, but typically on the kits, we put the chip with the largest amount of flash because we don't know what people are going to do with the kits. Uh, and of course, less memory means the chip itself costs less to the, to the customer. Same with the SRAM. Um, serial wire debug, which is basically a run by the PSOC 5 LP, which allows you to you know, step through your, your C code and, and, and debug it. Two CAN buses. CAN is controller area network. If you don't know, originally, um, back in the last century, uh, developed by Bosch for advanced braking systems or ABS, but it's like, it, it's gone into factories, robotics. Uh, it's all over the place now, wherever you need a robust bus. So you might run into this uh, even if, you, if you're in the automotive industry, you're definitely going to run into this, but you might run into this uh, in other areas as well. Uh, real-time clock, which is part of part of this because this is a real-time bus. You know, you press your brakes in your car, your car's got to stop. It can't, it can't, uh, can't be a delay um, while the MCU is doing something else. And then direct memory access. So this is the MCU subsystem. Then we have programmable analog blocks, and every PSOC has some level of analog blocks. Here you've got uh, uh, op amps, a uh, SAR, ADC, a low power comparator, six of those cap sense, and then um, 
8-bit current DAX and 7-bit current DAX. And then um, you've got programmable digital blocks. You've got um, universal digital blocks, which are basically the digital fabric that I, that I mentioned. Um, and then you've got some that are already dedicated like TCPWM stands for timer counter pulse width modulator. So it's more efficient because if you think about these, you know, a timer, a counter, a pulse width modulator, and it's also an encoder, uh, quad encoder um, can be programmed. And they're all forms of counters. They're all counting something, right? Whether it's a, whether it's a duty cycle, whether it's a clock, uh, revolutions of a wheel or whatever. Um, so it makes sense to just more efficient in silicon to build these. And then there is um, uh, the serial communication blocks. So I2C, SPI, which is serial peripheral interface, UARTs. And then also because you know almost any kind of embedded design needs some kind of output. Um, sometimes it's a radio and the output goes to your phone, right, uh, in an app. But uh, a seven segment LCD drive. So it makes it really easy to put up some some sort of output so that the user knows something's happening, something's going on. Then we've got general purpose IO. Um, and this is basically goes to the pins. Uh, sometimes it can go and feed back, like you, you, you feed out to a, to a pin and then feed back to the, you know, uh, convert it and then feed back to the programmable digital side. And then the interconnect and routing, which ties all this together. So just, Quick summary, MCU subsystem, programmable analog blocks, programmable digital blocks, and interconnect and routing. Every PSOC has these four elements and the difference between the PSOCs and the families are, which arm do you have? How fast does it run? How many op amps do you have? Uh, how many UDBs do you have? And so on. So that is a quick overview of the PSOC. And here is a PSOC creator. Um, this is actually an actual design that we did uh, at MIT a couple of years ago for a, a workshop, which is a heart rate monitor. Um, and uh, you can see we used a couple of op amps to filter the signal. And anyhow, what you've got here, and this is, I think, a good place for me to um, jump into PSOC. It's, uh, well, maybe I'll do one more slide. Because uh, basically, you know, you've got library here. You drag and drop the components to the library. Uh, you use the wire tool to connect the components. And um, over here is your Explorer window. So basically, these are all everything. Well, under generated sources, generated when you compile the design. Uh, and we'll go get more in depth into this. But I just want to point out, um, you've got a Cypress library. And then you've got uh, what it says off chip. Now all these blue, you know, capacitors, resistors, these are not inside the PSOC. These are things that, you know, either would go on a breadboard or a PCB. And um, so you can, you can actually do a complete picture of your design because, uh, you know, not just what's in the PSOC, but what's outside of the PSOC. If you want an LED, you can put an LED, well, you'll see that you can put an LED uh, in the off chip library, so you know that oh, this pin's connected to an LED. You don't have to remember or or work on it. So here's a quick cheat sheet for this question. Yeah. So um, it looks like you're simulating the piece off there. Um, is that a internal software that you guys are using, or it's what software you guys use? PSOC Creator, which is what we are going to look at next. And yeah, it looks a lot like National Instruments Lab View. Um, I thought that when I first saw it too, but it's not. Um, All right, thank you. And it's not simulate. Unfortunately, when you have analog and digital and a microcontroller, putting a decent simulator together is really difficult. So there is no actual simulator, but the the chip is small enough, and it reprograms fast enough that you can do what we used to do with FPGAs back back in the days. You know, you'd, you'd make changes and reprogram it and, you know, see if it worked or, you know, um, figure out why it wasn't working, bring pins out to the, 
bring an internal signal out to an external pin so you could check to see if that thing was uh, toggling the way you expected it to. But anyhow, I digress. Um, so this is the basic design flow. So you start a new project, you place some components, you configure the components. I'm gonna show you all this. You connect the components with the wire tool. Um, then you build the hardware design and generate, the component APIs are automatically generated. Um, you write application code. Um, so, okay, so you got a PWM, but how are you gonna control it? Um, you got an ADC, um, you know, do you want any interrupts and stuff like that? So you write application code for that. And then you compile the C code, you build the hardware and you program the device and you can do all this stuff separately or you can do it in one step, you know, and I'll show you that. And then debug, you can do in circuit debug, but this is um, mainly with the C code. So you single step through your C code um, and see if things are happening the way you wanna want them to happen. Just be aware if you're in debug mode, it's gonna go to the first line of C code and just stop. So your design may be working fine, but if you put it in debug mode, you know, it's gonna stop at the first line of code. So you won't know if it's working. And then also, and we have a lot of examples that you can reuse as well, but you can capture your designs as your own components. So you can build your own components as well. Uh, in Verilog, as far as the um, uh, digital side goes, and you can bundle you know, a little, like an ADC to an op amp kind of thing together and just reuse it, name it yourself. So what I wanna do now is, uh, let's look at the time, yeah. Time is moving on. But I've got, uh, I can stay over if, uh, if needed and if you want me to. Um, so there's a, there's a breathing LED demo. If you loaded the kit package and I'll show you, there will be on the start page, I think says kits and you'll, you'll find the demo there. Um, we're using PSAC Creator and the components, there's two pulse switch modulators, there's a system clock, there's an XOR gate, an AND gate, and then the pin component, which is basically a digital output. So this is your PC running PSAC Creator. Um, you connect the kit via USB. This is the PSAC 5, which is actually called the mini prog. Um, and then, um, we, we just have two commands from the arm, which is basically start P, PWM1 and start PWM2. Then there's the XOR gate, the AND gate, and the pin. So this is a schematic. Let me, I'm gonna go to the, um, let's see, how do I, hmm. there we go. I'm gonna go to, So this is, so how did I get here? Um, if you loaded the kit file, you will only have one kit under here, but at the 043, and there will be a PSAC4 breathing LED. Now this is in your program file, so you can't actually use it there. It'll come up and ask you for a, where else, where should I put this? So basically you can put it on your desktop uh, somewhere else, but it, I mean, it can't be in this protected, uh, area, which is under the programming program files. Um, but that's, uh, that's where it resides till you use it the first time. Now this one um, is elsewhere, but so I pulled this up. In fact, let me close the workspace. And let me show you a few other things here. So, um, Here, this is actually a live window. Uh, if you're connected to the internet and, and things will come up like a new part's been, been um, released or something like that. Um, and you can create a new project, you can open an existing project, you can find code examples. Let me look at this for a second here. So we are using a 4200M device. And these are all the examples that are available. Um, let's see if the breathing LED is in here. I don't think the breathing LED is in here because it's in the kit package. Um, but there's basic, uh, um, how do I want, if I want to measure an analog voltage and compare it, how do I do that? Um, UART, 
um, CapSense, uh, DMA, so on. And then these other, so this is a 044 kit. So this is a different kit, same chip, but it's got bells and whistles on it. It's got an accelerometer, it's got CapSense, uh, it's got a connector for Raspberry Pi uh, and, and touch gestures. So uh, that's, a, that's a different kit. Anyhow, the point is you've got a lot of these things in here to work from. Um, but I am going to open this again. Um, and if you are opening it for the first time, and I'm gonna go to my top design. If you're opening it for the first time, there will be nothing under this generated source because you haven't compiled it yet. So this will be empty. But if we look at it, this is what I told you. There's two PWMs. There is um, a clock for the PWMs. There's the XOR gate, the AND gate, and then the switch so you can stop everything. A stop switch, kill switch basically, and which is on the kit, but it's not inside the PSOC. That's why it's this blue, it's in this off chip library. Um, if we look at that, you can see you've got active components. Um, you can have op amps and other things outside the, the PSOC, obviously. Various kinds of diodes, um, electromechanical, so connectors. So if you've got a motor, if you're doing some motor control, a switch, um, a test point, um, passive components, which are basically, you know, uh, inductor potentiometer and so on. Um, and then on the Cypress library, you've got these components. So you've got an analog, uh, and basically the library, we're working with a specific kit, the software knows what kit it is. So only things that are in that kit are in this library. So in other words, you know, you know there's no BLE component here because this kit doesn't have Bluetooth low energy on it. But if we open another kit that did have Bluetooth low energy, uh, there would be a BLE component in the communications area. Um, and then here's where the digital logic lives. So you've got functions like counters and quadrature decoder and, and stuff that I mentioned. But then you've also got logic. So you've got granular Boolean logic. So you could, you know, you could build a half adder or something all from, you know, flip-flops and NAND gates and stuff like, uh, like they probably made you do at some point in your career um, at, as a student. Anyhow, what we've got here, I'm gonna make sure I watch the time here. Here's the example and it's called a breathing LED and it's a breathing LED because if you look <clears throat> at these two PWMs are offset just a little bit. We're gonna look at that in a second. And then as this, uh, uh, as the offset is the, the offset takes over and then the XOR gate, which is a uh, output <clears throat> on zero one and one zero because this is active low. Um, you'll see it, it gets uh, longer and longer in terms of the duty cycle or in terms of the time the, the LED is on. And then it uh, um, tailors off and just kind of repeats that. So what, is, what does this mean? So We've got the PWMs here. So if we double click on a PWM, you're going to see um, that it can be a timer, counter, PWM, quadrature encoder, like I said. But if you click on PWM, uh, you can, the, the, all this is uh, default except for the period. So here we've got a period of 200. And if I click on this one, we've got a period of 198. So you see there's a slight offset. And what does that look like um, for the kit? And I believe it's programmed like this. Let me have to open this a little bit so I can um, see that I'm showing you this in the camera. Uh, let me stop sharing for a minute. Okay. So you can see it kind of looks like it's breathing. It's it brighter and darker and brighter and darker. All right, so that's, that's what happens. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back here, share the screen again. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reduce this by two. So 
So I'm going to go to 196 and say, OK. Now, I've just made a slight change. And you can build. And then um, you can compile the file. So for example, if I changed over to main.c here, I can still build, but I can compile the file now. So you have to, to compile the file separately. You have to be in the main.c window. Or I can do it all at once, which is um, which is called build. Uh, so gener okay, let me, let me step back. Generate application takes the hardware and basically makes a net list. Um, compile file compiles the C code. But if you do build, it does it both all at once. And assuming you have no errors, you'll come up with a, a clean design. But you can also click on this here, and that will do uh, everything, include programming the device. So you can see down here, uh, the build started. And uh, what it's going to do is take these components um, and uh, basically create a net list. And then it's running kind of slow. Don't know what I have open that's interfering. Um, but it's going to create a net list. And uh, once it does that, then it's going to move to the C code, which basically for this, it is just you know two lines of C code. There's no. Uh, basically, they put the CPU to sleep to uh, save um, power. But once you start the PWMs, they just keep running. And the clock, you actually don't need that. You used to, when this kit first came out, you needed to have that. But now um, in future revs of the PSOC creator, they figured, well, if you're using a clock, of course you want it running. So you don't have to turn the clock on anymore. Um, And we can see that it's now programming. And you can see it was successfully programmed. And now if I stop sharing, I can show you You can't really maybe tell, but it's actually going a little bit faster than it was before. Okay, so now what if we change the offset between the periods even more? So what if I go um, back here and let's uh, go to the top design schematic and let's go, let's say 190 for the, for the period. So you can make these incremental changes. The point I'm making here is you can make these incremental changes very quickly, um, see what happens, or if, see if what you expect to happen happens, for example, and, um, and so on. So even though there's no simulator, it's pretty um, quick to make some changes and, and see if you're getting the result that you're expecting. OK, so this time it's much quicker. OK, and now you can see I'm using a battery here, by the way, uh, a, a brick. So you can see that it's going much faster now. OK, so then the third question is, what if we take the offset away completely? So let's put this at 200, just like the other one, and see what happens. Um, program it again.
This is interesting because it, uh, Stop this so I can see. So, and basically, I don't know if you can see that, but it's very dim. Um, so it's not quite, I, oh yeah, it's very dim. And let's go back and see one other way. Let's put this back to 198. Now, there are other compan. Uh, things you can change here. You can do a pseudo random or PDL, PD, PWM at dead time. You can align it to the left or the right side or the center. And um, you can use a direct or inverse output, asynchronous or synchronous. So anyhow, there's other things you can do here. And basically, let me show you well, I'm, well, let's do this first and then I'll show you the, the data sheet. So the clock is at um, almost 20 kilohertz, right? So let's- um, uh, Patrick, I, I don't yeah. think we see your screen. Oh, I need to share my screen. Okay. Let's get back here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There. Okay, so this was uh, 19800. I changed it to 10800. And this is the, it's called PM, PWM clock, but over here it's really, um, if I was to pull it out, it would be the clock. And we just named it PWM clock because if you have many different components, you might have different clocks running them. Anyhow, I'm going to program this. Um, some other things you have over here are the various pins. So any pin can be analog, bi-directional, digital, uh, or digital input or digital output. So you can uh, um, do a lot of different things with pins. And I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Um, and the other thing I was going to show you was the data sheet. So if you just Why is my mouse not working? Okay. If we go down to digital functions, for example, and we're using PWMs, but what if I don't really know how to use a PWM? Well, there's a data sheet here um, in all of the, um, for every component. And you can see this data sheet is 51 pages long. So, um, it tells you kind of, you know, and it's if it, it's 51 pages long because it's three data sheets in one, essentially a lot of stuff is overlap, but you know, there's there's different things you can do here. Um, it gives you a general description. It tells you when to use it or common when it's commonly used. Um, then it gives you a description of every um, connection on the device. And it also gives you um, the APIs. Um, so I'm not gonna go through this whole thing, but basically there's a lot of information in this, you know, it shows you um, what the output's gonna look like and so on. And um, go back and, uh, and so on. So every component here, they've all got data sheets. Even the pin has a data sheet and I'm gonna go into that. But first, let me just show you what happened with the other design. So you can see it's going much slower because I slowed down the clock. That makes sense, right? The frequency. Um, okay, so let me go back to the presentation and it looks like we might actually maybe get through the first um, oh, where, oh, I got a lot of things open. That's why I just do this. 
Okay. So we looked at that. We basically did all this stuff. So I'm not going to go over it again. Um, so what I think the last thing we'll have time for is that I can I can do the the um, firmware example, and then um, I'll leave the PWM example up to you. But basically, we're just going to use the MCU. We're not going to use a PWM, and we're going to blink the LED. So um, now all of this, uh, you may, in fact, no, it's already open, so I don't have to worry about it, but it's a security thing uh, that I have to enable myself and as admin to even open the software, open this window. But this is for PSOC 3, which is an 8051 based PSOC. And all you, all Kyle is doing, because it's a Kyle compiler, they're counting heads. Um, um, and so if you, you can say, I think there's a new one that says, uh, don't show me this anymore. Um, but if you get the license number from Kyle, you put it in there, you'll never see this again either. So, but for now you could just say register later. And then um, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go back to PSAC Crater and I'm gonna run through this. Um, There's creator. Okay, so I'm gonna close this workspace. Okay, now I'm back on the start page. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to file new project. Okay, now there's several different things. We can have a target module. Um, you can see the last one I used was a BLE module. We can have a target device or we can have a target kit. And so if you have the target kit, it already knows what's on the kit. So um, I'm using the kit. And so I say next. And then um, you can have a code example or pre-populated, but for our purposes here, we're just gonna do something very simple. So I want an empty schematic. And I'm going to call this uh, SJSU LED. So now I've got my library here. You can see there's no files uh, under main.c. And what I want to do is I want to pin. So I want a digital output pin. And now I'm holding control and circling it to, to, uh, to zoom in. So I've got this pin and even the uh, digital output, output pin has a data sheet that's 48 pages long. That's because it covers all cases of the pins, output, input, shows you how to make um, you know, locked pins and, and make uh, like headers if you concatenate pins and so on. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to get, get into that. Just wanted to show you that it's there. And, and you think for something as simple as a pin, uh, the data sheet would be a, a lot uh, less pages. Anyhow, so you can, you can double click, which will open the configure box, or you can uh, right click, and then you have a, a, a bunch of different things. And the one you want to do is configure. So there's two ways to do this. So now you'll notice. It's a digital output pin with a hardware connection, but we're using the MCU. So the MCU is not considered hardware. It's considered firmware. So if I left this and wrote some code and tried to compile it, I would get an error because it would say you got this pin hanging here connected to nothing. So um, delete hardware connection. Now, it, now the software knows that this is, um, this is uh, controlled by the MCU and not, it's not looking for any kind of connection to any of the other stuff inside of PSOC. And you got various uh, ways you can configure the pin, um, high impedance, resistive pull up and down, open drain, uh, just leave it on strong. And the initial drive state is low. Uh, you, could, you could choice of low or high. So anyhow, 
said, okay, so you see the little connector disappear. So I can't connect any hardware to it now. Okay, so that's it for the pin. Now, um, I wanna go to main.c. And what I'm going to do is write two, two lines of code here. Um, and, and basically also notice that it's not just pin, it's pin underscore one. I can change the name of the pin up here if I want to. Um, well, let's do that. I can change it to LED because it's connected to an LED. I could also pull an LED over here. And, um, you know, there's another choice where you can put an external terminal on there and I could connect the LED to the external. Well, I can do that. Anyhow, it doesn't matter. This is not inside PSOC. It just tells you that it's gonna be connected to an LED and the software doesn't see this at all. PSOC creator does not really see this, treats it like text. Okay, so what am I gonna do with the main.c? I'm gonna say LED underscore right. Uh, XOR LED underscore read. And then I'm going to put in something called CY delay. Oh, it's capital D, I believe. Delay 1000. And that's basically going to tell, you know, it's a, it's a blink on and blink off. So it's going to do this loop. It's going to do this command. It's going to rest for a thousand clock cycles and it's going to go back and do this command again. Okay, one other thing I need to do is pins. So if I click on pins here, it comes up with a, a picture of the chip and any pins that I have in the design. And I'm just gonna double check, but I think this is, yeah, port one six. So the um, kits are very well labeled if you look closely. Um, everything is, is the legend on there, all the, all the ports. And the way we do this in PSOC, um, it's like port one, uh, you know, uh, one, one uh, port one dot one, which is the first bit on the first port or, or dot zero, um, up zero to seven. And I said this was uh, port one dot six, correct? I did. So now I have locked the LED to this pin, which is routed to the LED on the kit. So if I use the different pin, the light's not gonna blink at all because it's not connected to it. So what can I do now? I can plug this kit back in to my PC and I can uh, program it. I didn't have a kill switch on here, so I didn't program the switch. So the only way to turn this one off is to unplug it from your computer. Um, so there's not uh, there's not a lot to do, but it's still got to go through all its uh, cycles of uh, generating the APIs and compiling the code, even though there's not a whole lot of it. Um, but you can see these files suddenly appear over here. Um, and these are all, all these APIs just for this simple design. Again, previously people had to write all these themselves and it was uh, um, typographical errors and things would, would kill you. So looking, looking for why doesn't this thing work? Uh, anyhow, okay, we've got it. And um, it's complete. And I'll stop sharing at this point. And um, you can see my LED is blinking. So, and it's not breathing anymore, it's just blinking. So, um, so it's pretty straightforward, I think, the design flow here. You take a component or you, you figure out what you wanna do. You grab the components you need to do at building blocks, whether they're PWMs or op amps, or you know, if you're getting data from a sensor, 
you're going to want an analog to digital converter probably you're also probably going to want an amplifier to not only amplify the signal you might want another amplifier to filter the signal um, you get noise out and um, and so on so i see we're running out of time here so let me just uh, open the floor for questions there's another lab where you do the same thing i just did but use a pwm i think there's enough detail in the presentation that you can do that yourself um, and uh, hopefully this was useful for you and hopefully maybe later this year even we can do something on campus So, oh, I see there's a lot of stuff in the chat here. So let me open oh, the chat. Oh, we've been, we've been keeping up with the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, the, any, um, no, anyway, thank you so much, Patrick. I really appreciate it. Um, and I think, yeah, for the on-campus thing, uh, Marielle will reach out. Um, and I don't Great. know how people feel about another Zoom session before we start up for the next thing um but i'll i'll get a poll from everybody yeah i mean it's fine and uh you know as i mentioned we now have infineon kits um to 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 work with so and that's um some of them are already in the modus toolbox software which is the psoc 6 and beyond from cypress and what they're called xmc is the microcontrollers from infineon there's another one called rx which has its own software that I haven't gotten into yet, but that's for more for automotive. Um, so we've got all these different possibilities and potentialities for different workshops. Um, also being in San Jose, you know, there are other people uh, at Cypress and in, well, what we call Legacy Cypress and Legacy Infinia. Uh, there are other experts on other um, uh, topics that I could possibly uh, get to come and do, do uh, you know, a guest lecture or something like that. So again, I really appreciate you spending uh, some of your Saturday morning with me. And hopefully you all have a, a great weekend, rest of the weekend. And we'll be back, uh, hopefully, like I said, depending on the trajectory of this uh, COVID stuff, hopefully we'll be back on campus sometime before the end of the year. I, um labs i guess it's this kind of thing we i don't know yet but labs are meeting face to face um i imagine we have a a vaccine mandate you know it's got a lot of rules to yeah well i'm fully vaccinated so that that doesn't yeah. bother me if i need to wear a mask that doesn't bother me yeah um um but yeah i um we just Normally there wouldn't be any coordination, you would, except for with Marielle. Um, yeah. But this one, yeah, probably, you know, at least 50 people would probably come. Um, but they've actually just haven't really changed course since setting the, the mass, the, uh, the vaccine mandate. And I think the, uh, well, there's gotta be a mask mandate now too. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've got the little card, a picture of the card on my phone. I don't want to take yeah. it anywhere because I'm oh, afraid I might lose it. <laughs> no, no, I don't think anybody's uh, right now. And the the proof, the requirement of proof isn't a big deal, but um, we will make it work. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. the opportunity. So in especially... regards to, um, sorry, uh, in regards to connecting with Mr. Patrick, um, Will I get the information from you, Professor Perrin? Yes, it's, it's patrick.kane oh. at infinian.com. So, okay. Uh, you, okay. Know what, you know what? Um, how about I just, here, I'll just put this in. In case you have any questions that come up after this session that you didn't think of, or you're trying the other lab, you can email me. Yeah. Okay. I just connect. I just um, did a simple email CC to both of you. Okay. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, this went a little quicker than I had planned. I thought I was going to run yeah. out of time. But well, I th I think um, some people were keeping up and some people are probably going slower. But by making it, um, 
you know, the, I'll make the recording available. Uh, I'll send out an email where, where it's at. It'll, it'll take a, maybe an hour to process. Um, and then two, we did have uh, students kind of of all ages, if you will. And so if you have any question about what certain things mean, uh, just shoot me an email. Uh, or actually we can wait in the chat right now. Um, yeah, that's, it, my, this... that's my mistake. I forgot. Usually I ask uh, before I begin, but with IEEE, it's usually, you know, first year, second year, third year, fourth year. Yeah, yeah. This is some might not know. But yeah, it, it's a bit, all, you know, we have uh, grad students here today too. So Yeah, and there are a lot of videos at site. So, so the websites aren't um, totally together and won't be actually for about a year. I, it's amazing to me how difficult that is to put the two you know, cypress.com and infinian.com. They're just in the process of moving stuff over to infinian.com more than a year after our acquisition. But anyhow, there are, are many, many videos on PSOC Creator um, and PSOC 4 on cypress.com. So um, that's a, a wealth of information. There's, you know, how to build a robot um, or how to use this in building a robot. Um, and, and various other things that are pretty interesting from, from basic fundamental use to some quite sophisticated uses. Yeah, um, just one thing they were using, um, I had been going into the, oh, let's see, one set of videos and it was with a different kit and um like when you plug it in the breathing is already working right and um it, i don't think this one did that or, or no, no the, pressing the reset button didn't there was something a little bit it was a great video but it was a little bit off yeah um, um so yeah. What was I going to say? Typically, there's something programmed into the device. And in fact, I think the breathing LED is, is a common one. And then oh, if, no, you you're reprogram, right. if you reprogram it and it doesn't change, well, then you actually successfully program the device. If it does change, then you, then you messed yeah. up somehow. Oh, now I can't find it. But no, what it, what it was is... Um, Something quite didn't match, and now I can't. Breathing work, no breathing worked automatically, but then well, if, if he went into a bootloader or something. Uh, but anyway, it's not a big deal. I'm just yeah, trying I mean, to find it, that it, link. It, it is in the sense that if it's an error and it's a video on our website, I certainly want to know about it and get it fixed. Oh, it's just it's a it's a newer kit, I think. Is it a PSOC six kit? No, I'm thinking 49. Ah, 149. That, yeah. That's this no, one. I can't. <laughs> that, that, that no, this four, no, this is 43, isn't it? No, this one I'm holding off. Oh, I'm 149. Sorry. Because oh, my okay. next workshop is at Arizona State with that kit, because that's what they're going to use for, um, okay. for their embedded course this semester. So hopefully, I'll actually get to travel to Phoenix. Um, we'll see what happens. I can do it yeah. virtually if I have to, but uh, that's okay. a, a, short, a, a short trip. I have a quick question for you, uh, Patrick. Um, so what do you do exactly for Infineon? Like, you know, what do, do I you, do? Yeah, it's, do you do apps or marketing or I well, don't know. Um, right now I'm in a, um, a group called Business Excellence which, is, or, or Bex, and there's like, I don't know, maybe a hundred people in Munich. This was just started here um, in June, I guess, May or June. And there's uh, five people in the group, including my boss in the Americas. And I'm basically running what we call the University Alliance. So up until April 2020, it was the Cypress University Alliance. Now it's the University Alliance, University Alliance and I was recruited from Xilinx in 2006, where I ran the Xilinx University program for four years to start a university program at Cyprus. So what I do is things like this, 
I, um, I, you know, go to academic conferences and also do workshops and show professors our wonderful technology. And um, right now I'm working uh, with a colleague on an online course that will have uh, digital badges you'll be able to earn uh, by completing the courses. So I think especially after this year of everybody um, being online, forced to be online, that there is, you know, there's, there is some more acceptance of some online stuff, as long as it's not all online. <laughs> so if you can still go in the classroom, you might still want to do some online um, courses and there'll be digital badges and stuff. So basically that's what, you know, what I, what I, my job in three words is educating future customers. That's you, we hope. And, um, and that's what, you know, that's, that's what I do. So I'm not in HR. Um, at Cyprus, I was in marketing in terms of department, but I'm still doing pretty much the same things and types of things I've been doing for the last 15 years, actually, since 2006. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you again. Thanks for, for uh, spending the time. Appreciate it. So I see we're a minute over now, so I'll, I'll respect All your right. time. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, thank you so much, Patrick, and uh, thank you for everybody who's coming. Um, you know, it's one of the great things about San Jose State that we can have these kinds of things and have these experts come. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I, and I enjoy my time there in, you know, all the departments and, and professors I've worked with over the years. So uh, it's a great school and, uh, um, and it's certainly a good place for us to look for new employees. All right. Take care. All right. Bye, All right, everybody. Take care. All right, guys. There I am.